you have family that comes before you. I don't really think it's necessary for introductions. Just like when I have a chance to come before this, I ask Pastor, you, you just come on up. But this, this anointed man of God is a whirlwind of energy and one who is literally on fire for the Lord. And in a short time, and in a short time, he has blessed us so. And we love him. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. So we celebrate the word that will go forth given by Pastor Eric Sanders. Amen. Song says, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord till I die. And I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord until I die. Can y'all help me sing that for a moment? Come on, you know. I will, I will trust. Jesus. Thank you for a move of God 
And I thank you, Lord, that you hide me behind your cross. When the people see me, let them only see you. In Jesus' name we pray. Hallelujah. Until I, until I die. Come on, one last time. I will trust everybody. Say, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust. Yes, I will. Trust in the Lord until I die. Hallelujah. If you haven't already, tell somebody in your left and right, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to be sitting next to you today. Hallelujah. Praise the name of our God. I'm glad to see all of you. I wanted to um, thank the Lord for bringing me home safely. I fought my way to get here <laughs> and I appreciate the Lord for bringing us safely and I thank God for salvation and for life and for filling me with his spirit amen thank God for our pastor today let's thank God for him in his absence come on help me celebrate the angel of this house glad he's getting some rest amen I'm thankful for our assistant pastor today God bless you brother and all of the ministers, everyone in their respectful places, to the word of God, Matthew 20. Matthew 20. I know we read it already, but I'd like to look at it again before we go any further. Matthew 20. Hallelujah. The presence of the Lord is here. And that's a reason for you to get excited in your spirit. Because where the presence of the Lord is... There is deliverance. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for whatever is ailing you, there is deliverance. Whatever is bothering you, there's deliverance. Tell somebody whatever is getting on your nerves. Hallelujah to God. You know, sometimes you got them imps that just get on your nerves. Oh, Jesus. Don't even let me get to church and have a good worship experience. But your nerves going to be set free today. Amen. 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 Matthew 20. If you got it, say, I got it. All right. And 29 through 34. Thank you so much. Verse 29. And as they departed from Jericho, a great multitude followed him. And behold, two blind men sitting by the wayside. When they heard that Jesus passed by, they cried out, saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And the multitude rebuked them because they should hold their peace. But the Bible says they cried the more, saying, Have mercy on us, O Lord, thou son of David. And Jesus, shout Jesus. Jesus. And I said, shout Jesus. Shout Jesus. Stood still and called them. And said, what will ye that I shall do unto you? They say unto him, Lord, that our eyes may be opened. So Jesus had compassion on them and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight and they followed him. If you would declare with me today the word of God, Lord, let me see. Lord, let me see. Let me see. Pray for us today. Uh, one, one word that is integral to this.
this, what the Lord wants to say to us today is the word vision. Say that with me, vision. Um, and I want to define for you what vision is before we go any further. Vision is the power or faculty of seeing. Somebody say, Lord, let me see. It is the perception of objects by the use of your eyes. And I'll say that whether it's your natural eyes or your spiritual eyes. Are you walking with me? Vision, shout vision. Vision, and we read it in this definition, it gives you two things. I told you vision is the power or faculty of seeing, and it's the perception of objects by use of your eyes. Vision gives you power, and vision controls your perception. Help us to preach your word, God. I'll say that again. Vision gives you power when you have eyesight, when you have the faculty, the ability to see. Particularly if it is uh, spiritual vision, keen spiritual vision, it gives you another measure of power. How many of you understand what I'm talking about? I appreciate my parents because in growing up, and my parents, I always talk about them because they are such a major part of my Christian experience. I appreciate my parents because my parents had very profound discernment. Um, there were people that I would think they were okay, and my mother would say, no, nah, don't fool with that one. Come on. Say amen, church. And, and, there, and there were things that I would think was okay to do. And my dad would tell me, no, son, that ain't for you. And as I grew up, I learned it was because they had a keener sense of sight than I did. They had perception, clear perception. It gave them another measure of power. Vision is your range of sight. It is how far you can see. Your vision, how far you can see. Vision is also your view, your vantage, some people will call it, your view. Meaning, you know, some people have a good view versus a bad view. You walking with me so far? Uh, vision is also your mental perception or your regard. It's your judgment. It's how you look at things. I know I'm starting slow, but I ain't going to be long. Just let me get my gears wound up. Somebody say this with me. We need our vision. And make it personal. Say, Lord, let me see. Now, today, there are three kinds of people that we have in our midst. In this assembly today, the Lord spoke to me. Three kinds of people. There are some of us who don't even realize that we have lost the ability to see. Those are those people that are driving on the road half blind and endangering the lives of everybody else. Come on, church. Changing lanes and misjudging distances. They don't even realize that they can't see the way that they used to see. That's a dangerous situation. Then there are some of us in here who have lost our sight and we know we lost our sight but we have grown accustomed to not seeing for so long that it don't even bother us anymore that's a bad situation too say amen church I don't care what situation you are in don't you ever let the devil get you settled into a place that God did not ordain for your life care how long you have been suffering with that affliction in your body tell the devil he is a liar today just might be the day that the Lord heals my body talk back to me in here church good to see you mama no matter how long you've been in that situation don't you allow the enemy to make you think that it is your permanent diagnosis are you hearing me? 
another part of us in here who we still can see, but we just don't see right. Vision for us is not 2020 anymore. Sometimes we see two where there's only one, five when there's only three. My grandmother used to call it cockeyed vision. Say amen, church. When you just can't see straight. This is the category that needs just, you need to just visit an eye doctor, get some corrective support. Come on, church. You can, they, got a, they got something for that. It's called eyeglasses or contact lenses. Say amen. Whatever category you fall into, I submit to you today that we all need God to deliver us and give us our vision back. Whether it needs to be corrected or it needs to be restored, hallelujah, we need it. Look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, you need it. Say, yeah, he's talking to you. Proverbs 29 and 18 tells us this, it says, where there is no vision, the people will perish. Where there is no vision. I'm just illustrating to you that you do need it. Because there were some people still looking at me a little strange. But I'm telling you that you need your vision. Your spiritual and your natural vision. And, and, and when you've lost your vision, understand this. When you've lost your vision, you have literally lost the ability to believe God for a better future. When you've lost your vision, you've lost your ability to hope in God for things to change in your life. You've lost your ability to trust the Lord for better than where you are right now. When you've lost your vision, the enemy has fooled you into believing that circumstances will never change and things will never get better. But I came to tell you that the devil is a liar. One thing about trouble is this. It don't last always. Can somebody please talk back to me in here? One thing about tables is what? Eventually, baby, the tables will turn back around. Say amen. I'm just saying that to, saying that to tell you that, that, that don't ever think that the circumstance is not going to change. Let me, let me grow a little further with it. Just because, look right here at me for a moment. Just because one Negro didn't love you right. Don't mean that you'll never have a good, healthy relationship. Say amen, church. Just because one person broke your heart, that don't mean you're going to be lonely all your life. The devil is a liar. God gives second chances. Somebody ought to say he can be better the second time around. One monkey don't stop no show. Shout, Lord, let me see. Just because you lost one job. That don't mean you ain't never going to prosper. Say amen, church. They may have fired you. They may have set you up on that job. You may have come in contact with some corporate demons. But I'm here to tell you, that does not mean that your career is ruined and over and done with. You can still live good, drive good, eat good, travel good, shop good. Come on. Tell somebody, Lord, let me see. I'm going to get to you in a moment just because you're driving a hoopty right now. That don't mean that's your last car. Come on, you can drive well. Shout, Lord, let me see. Just because you're staying with somebody right now, that don't mean God ain't going to give you your own. Am I helping somebody? I want to make sure it's in your spirit. Just because you live, you, you, every now and again, we all go through circumstances. That's not particularly favorable, but it is not your final destination. Shout, Lord, let me see. Mm. Just because they denied you the loan the last time. Come on, it's more banks in Chicago than that. Why y'all looking strange? Y'all don't mean go home and be depressed. Well, I guess God wasn't telling me to start my business. The devil is a liar. Just because one door closed, there's another door over yonder. Let's go to another bank. Come on. And if they deny me over there, I'll go over across the street to the other bank. But one way or another, God is going to bring prosperity to pass in my life. Say, Lord, let me see. See, all God is waiting for is for you to get to the point where you acknowledge that you want to see. 
that you want your vision back. I went through all of those things because I want to make the word real to you and I want you to think about and apply it to your own situation. I don't want you to be looking down on yourself and thinking that you're less than. You are a kingdom citizen. You are an heir of the most high God. You are a chosen generation. You are a royal priesthood. His will is that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. You are called to be the head and not the tail. The lender and not the borrower. Above and not beneath you are going to live better than you ever lived in your life all you got to do is see it you have to see it somebody say before you see it you have to see yourself over in your future before you realize your future in Matthew 20 when we read this text we find the story of these two blind men and they're begging Jesus to heal them and to give them their sight I can't help but believe that these two men probably strategically placed themselves in Jesus' way. You understand what I'm saying to you? And, and, and you, church, you, you, you have to do the very same thing. You have to learn to strategically place yourself in the right place. Amen, church. Ooh, I'm going to make somebody mad for a moment, but I just heard it in my spirit. God said, listen, if you want to prosper, you got to stop hanging around broke people. I'm sorry, but listen, if you want to be delivered, you want to stop getting high, you can't hang out at the crack house. Y'all not talking back to me. If there's something you're trying to change in your life, you can't stay in the same situation. You have to shift your environment. And God is saying, if you want to be healed, stop staying in the same place and shift your position strategically you got to do the same thing let me say this to you you can't be too proud or too arrogant to beg and plead with God for healing see 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 I'm almost finished brother you may want to get over here to help me I'm almost done listen let me say to you let me say to you 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 cannot be too proud or too arrogant and see the thing is this if there was a natural millionaire in this place today who said for the one that shows me that they want it I'm gonna give them an inheritance of such and such million dollars we would be shouting pleading come on church but see we have grown too common with the Spirit of God we have the Almighty God working in our lives we have the Holy Spirit, the most creatorial power that ever was living on the inside of us. And we are too arrogant to get before God and say, God, I need a breakthrough. I need a healing. I need deliverance. Don't be too arrogant to pray with God. These men, I like them. They were an example to us. They, they weren't too arrogant to say, Lord, this is what we need. This is where we are. And so they placed themselves in Jesus' way. Listen to me. You've got to go get in line for a miracle. You can't sit at home missing church, missing Bible study, talking about I'm waiting on God to move for me. How about you get up and you show God you want him to move for you. Press your way to the house of God. Make your way to service even when you don't feel bad. Listen, there's only two times that you should praise God. It's when you feel like it and when you don't. You got to press your way even when you're sick in your body, when you're hurting in your mind, when you're confused, when you lost the job, lost the car. Still press your way. To see Jesus. You can't sit at home talking about, I'm waiting on God to bring me out. You ain't waiting on God, God is waiting on you. Somebody shout, Lord, let me see. He's waiting for you to get to the point where you recognize that you can't do nothing by yourself. He's waiting for you to get to the point where you realize with all of your education and your degrees and your, and your training behind your name and your certificates. I know they licensed you. They ordained you. They christened you. Come on, church. They made you a professor over this and so. But listen, with all your education, you are never too big for God say amen church I don't care how much money you get in your bank account you will never lose a need for God 
you will always need him more than you need money. You will always need him more than you need friends. You will always need him more than you need resources. I need him more than I need the food that I eat. Come on, church. I need him more than the car that I drive. I need him more than the job I have. That job is not my source. It's just a resource. But my source is the most high God. Open your mouth and say, yes, Lord. Say, God, let me see him better than I ever seen in my life. Clap your hands and bless him right there. One of the things that I enjoyed the most about this passage is that when these two men suffered together, hallelujah to God, they were healed together. Hallelujah to God. Psalm 133 tells us that when we come together, the Lord commands a blessing. When we share in tribulation, we will also share in our petition to Christ. Say amen, church. We should set aside our differences and unite to meet the common goal. What are you saying to me, Pastor? I'm saying all of us in here trying to make it to say Jesus. We all want to be heaven bound. Come on, shout yes if you know what I'm talking about. We all trying to be saved and delivered and set apart. Come on. So that means we don't have no reason to be fighting against one another and hating on each other. We all trying to get to the same destiny. Look at your neighbor. Say neighbor. Forget about all of the issues. And let's get this thing done for the Lord. Forget about who shot John. Come on, church. And who killed Mamie Sue. Come on, church. And let's go somewhere for the Lord. I don't hear nobody talking back to me in here. But we need to get to the point where we forget about all of the differences. We stop fighting about trivial things. Who going to sit where? I don't care where you sit me at. Just let me be in the number. You can put my seat in the back of the church, but please don't leave me outside. Same man church. I ain't worried about no position, and I'm not worried about no title. You can have the title, but just give me Jesus. You can have the position, but let me be counted amongst the sanctified. Shout yes. You can have all the accolades. But let me get some of the anointing. Let me get some more deliverance. Let me get some more power. Let me get some more favor. Say yes. Open your belly and say yes again. And see, this is one of the things that the world has up on the church. I hear the thugs talk about it all the time. They say, forget about what you heard. Let's get this money together. Come on, church. They say, look at this paper. And meanwhile, the saints are collectively arguing about who should lead the song, who should read the scripture, who should be the lead usher. The devil is a liar. That's a trick of the enemy to keep us divided. But it's time now for the people of God to get on one accord. Go up in God together. Glow up in God together. Grow up in God together. We all can be blessed. We all can be healed. We all can be delivered. Shout glory. There's enough anointing in here for everybody on your road to get their needs met. There's enough power in this church for everybody in this room to get the yoke destroyed. Shout yes. Shout yes. We gotta stop being so busy. Minding about who don't like so-and-so and who mad with so-and-so and get together and pray. He said, if my people, not my person, but if my people, which are called by my name, would humble themselves. 
themselves. Seek my face. Turn from their wicked ways. I will forgive their sins. And I'll heal the land. Sound like to me. God gonna heal the whole church. God gonna bless the whole church. God gonna anoint the whole church. Clap your hands if you believe it. I'm getting ready to close here. But Matthew 18 and 19 tells us this. Says that if two of you shall agree on earth. Come on church. Touching anything that they will ask. It shall be done. Same man church. For where two or three are gathered. I'll be there. Shout in the midst of them. I heard another scripture. Said if one can put a thousand. Two can put Ten thousand. Well, just imagine, people of God, if all of us get together, how much damage we can wreak on the devil's kingdom. If I pray for you, you pray for me. We lift each other up. We can all. I said we can all get this blessing. Shout glory. Shout glory again. We see in the text here that the men heard that Jesus was passing by. I said they heard that Jesus. Now we saw the scripture told us that they were blind and they could not see. But here the Bible tells us that they could hear. Thank you, Jesus. And as I thought about it my own self, I said that let me know two things. That not only could they hear, but they could hear very well. And that they were listening. You say, how do I know they were listening? And how do I know they could hear well? Because the Bible says Jesus was followed by a multitude of people. And everybody wanted to get blessed. Wasn't no quiet church that day. Wasn't no steeple church that day. But there was some noise going on. Shout hallelujah. There was some noise going on. Shout thank you Jesus. But somehow in the midst of all that noise, these two men were yet able to hear when Jesus was in their destination. Say glory. These two men must have been listening for their moment. I'm getting ready to go here. But that's a word for somebody. You can't sit around and be in despair. But you got to open your ears and say, oh God, I am listening for my moment. I don't know when it's going to come. Might be on Sunday. Might be on Monday. It might be Thursday. Your day may be Saturday. But oh God, I want you to know I'm listening. And the moment I hear you passing by, I'm going to open my mouth and cry out, Lord, have mercy on me. Let me see, oh God. Give me my vision back. Clap your hands if you want it all back. Shout glory if you want it back. God spoke to me this. He said, son, sometimes you're in the middle of one affliction. But I came to tell you that that's some of the best times of your life. Because how many of you know when one sense goes bad, they say medically, come on church, is there any doctors in the room? When one of your senses go bad, sometimes God will bless the other sense. Same man church, if your eyesight go bad, God will bless your hearing to get better. Hallelujah to God. If your eyesight go bad, the Lord will bless your smelling to get better. Come on, church. Say amen if you believe it. What are you saying to me, Pastor Sam?
Sanders. I'm saying don't worry about it. Don't fret about the times when you were in darkness because the Holy Ghost said while you were sitting in darkness, I was refining your ear. While you were sitting in darkness, I was tuning your ear so that you would be able to hear me when I came to your stop. Say yes. Somebody in this room, you've been feeling like you was in darkness. But I came to tell you that Jesus, somebody shout Jesus. I came to tell you that Jesus is in the room today. And he said, whatever you need, I got it for you. If you need your eyes corrected, he said, I got it for you. If you need your eyes healed, he said, I got it for you. Is there anybody in here that say, Lord, I don't want you to pass me by. But oh God, while you're handing out blessings, stop by here. While you're healing people, God, stop by here. While you're delivering people, stop by here. Oh God, while you're passing through, stop by here, Lord. Clap your hands if you want it. My time is far spent. But listen, he wants to restore our sight. He wants to restore our sight. I gotta tell you three things. I wanna give you a little teacher so people say all he did was yell and holler. Three things you gotta do. You gotta seize the moment. Tell God exactly what you want. Are you hearing me? These blind men cried out, asked Jesus to have mercy. They recognized, they acknowledged his lordship. And at the same time, they made their request known. Some of you are crying out, but you're crying to the wrong people. Some of you are complaining, but you're just making noise. You're just complaining. You ain't saying nothing important. You ain't telling God what you need. You got to open your mouth and tell God exactly what you want. Number one, seize the moment. Number two, open your mouth, tell God exactly what you want. Third one is my favorite one. This is the one I want you to take home with you, okay? Post this on Facebook or whatever you want to do with it, okay? Put it on your refrigerator. Put it on a sticky in your car. The third one, are y'all ready? Most important one, you got to ignore folk who are trying to hinder your process. You got to learn to have the gift of goodbye. Hello. The anointing of I'll see you later. Let me tell you the anointing. You got to really get good in your spirit. You got to have the anointing of decline the call. You got to have the anointing of do not answer. Come on, church. Oh, let me make it plain for the young people. You got to have the block function on speed dial. Come on. You got to have that because this scripture tells us that it was all these people around there trying to rebuke the men and tell them to stay quiet. And isn't it amazing how when you bound up and you in sin, ain't nobody saying nothing. But when you trying to get your breakthrough, then people want to know, why are you going to church so much? Why are you fasting? You wasn't worried about me when I was doing what I ain't had no business doing. Why are you worried about me now? So you got to learn how to ignore them people. Get out of them. Get them out of your phone. Get them off your line. I don't play about that, mom. I don't play. Listen, I will ignore your call. Come on, church. I will ignore you until you deny your own existence. Come on, church. You ain't finna mess up my peace. Somebody got mad, but I'm telling truth. We allow people to interrupt our peace too much. We allow people to thwart our progress too much. All that negativity, all that ba -ba 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 a whole lot of banter. Come on, sounding brass and okay for the scriptural people, it's sounding brass and tinkling cymbal. 
You want to ignore all of that. You can stand. I'm getting ready to close, but we want God to give us our vision back. Something softly for me. You, 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 you. You want God to give you your vision back. You want to be able to see. And I told you at the beginning, whatever category you fall into, whether it's you just been seeing wrong for so long or you know, whatever it is today, let's all ask God, Lord, give me my vision back. He wants us to be able to envision ourselves in our future. I want you to do something. Look at a neighbor left and right and tell him, say, neighbor, I see you over in your future. And you look so much better than even you look right now. Come on, church. You look good in your future. You sharp. Come on. I see you with your new wardrobe, your new hairdo. Come on. Your new self-esteem, your new identity. You're looking good over in your future. And that's the awesome thing about God. When God gives us the ability to see again, we don't just see ourselves clearly. We also begin to see around us clearly. Amen. We no longer see our brothers and sisters as our enemy. We see them as our brothers and sisters in Christ. That we're on the same team. That's good. Right there. Yes. We see ourselves on the same team. We're working towards that common goal. Hallelujah to God. I'm going to open the altar. And I want to pray for just a few of you today who say, Lord, I really, really, really want my vision back. I don't want to spend the rest of this year spinning my wheels and in the same situation, the same predicament. I want to go on to what you've called me to be and to do and to see. Hallelujah. If that's here, you here today and you want a point of contact and you want prayer, the altar is open. You can come at this time. And we'll pray for you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.